guys, this is Cindy Leach, your polymer clay tutor in today's PCT product demo. I'm going to be demoing the brand new silk screens by Polymer Clay TV. And you can get them at createalong.com. Create All right, so I'm going to show you the silk screens. Um, this is how they came packaged, which is nice. And they're in these uh, different packages. They sent me six of them to test out. And if you are not familiar with silk screens, basically what they are, are a um, fine screen. They used to be made with silk. I think they're now mostly made with nylon and that kind of thing. But they have a polymer that's uh, infused into the, into the screen and then little blank spaces are left open where the screen is just a mesh and you can push paint through it, um, different types of materials. And silk screening has gotten really popular in a lot of mixed media um, uh, applications, and especially with polymer clay, it's gotten very popular lately. There are some other silk screens out there that you may find. Um, these are some ones by um, Sculpey, and you can see they're quite small, but they're very detailed and quite neat designs, especially for um, jewelry. And then there's other, like Heidi Swap does some art screens. Her screens are actually a little coarser than these screens here. Um, the Polymer Clay TV ones are, um, they are called, uh, what they, the screen size is 100, which means that there's 100 threads per inch. So it's a relatively fine screen and um, which has its, um, different advantages and different disadvantages. Okay, so the advantage to having the nice fine screen is that you can get some very nice detail. Having a very coarse screen, um, uh, it, but if the screen is a little bit too fine, then you can't get um, heavier glitter type um, paints and things through it. So there's, you would use the different screens for different purposes. But let me just show you um, the different patterns. The ones that I got sent to me were called uh, Lacy Vines, Squidly, <laughs> that's a cute name, uh, Triple Tapestry, uh, Dotty Stitches, Leaf Cyclone, and you can barely see the pattern through the package, but I'll show you how they look, and Hex Flowers. And I have printed out some samples here and I've even made up a couple of projects. Um, I'll show you the projects a little bit in more detail when I, after I uh, have put some paint on here and it needs to dry for a second. So we'll go into detail in those in a minute. But here are some of the patterns here and I have them on raw polymer clay. Now you'd silk screen onto raw polymer clay in most cases because then you can um, cut it out, shape it into different forms. And when you bake it, the paint becomes uh, heat set and permanent and it's really great. So this is a raw p piece here. This is the one with the lacy vines pattern on it. And um, I've got it on some souffle clay and I've used a hot pink um, screen printing ink. Um, this is made by Jacquard here and it's quite a thick ink. I wanted to test that one out. And here are the samples baked up and you can see that the paint goes on there very permanently. It's very, very tough and you can do all sorts of really cool things. Um, here's another sample here. This one I used two different colored paints. I used the Lumiere paints which have a lot of sparkle in them. I want to test to make sure that the sparkle could go through these screens and it does a nice job. This is the squidly pattern, I believe. Yes, it is. And um, I made a pair, pair of earrings with that pattern once they were baked. It's very pretty. We'll take a better look at those in a minute. Uh, the next pattern here is called triple tapestry. I used two different colors on a, um, of uh, Lumiere paints on some uh, souffle clay and you can see there's some really lovely detail there. This next one is called uh, Dotty Stitches and it has a very um, kind of fine detail but kind of graphic lacy kind of look to it. I really like it. Um, I use that in the pendant I have back there um, which I'll show better in a minute. Now this one, oh, and the paint I used for that one was um, Jacquard. Uh, let's see, it's this one here. It's the Neo Opaque one, and it worked beautifully on there. It's a, it's a light body acrylic paint. 
And the next one is Leaf Cyclone, and it's a cute one. Um, I used, uh, uh, which one? I used this uh, Lumiere paint on some uh, pesto souffle clay, and it has a cool effect. And then my favorite color combination, I think, here is um, used, I used the Hex Flowers um, Silk Screen. I used gold screen printing ink by Jacquard and I used the um, Robin's Egg Blue Souffle Clay and I just love it. It has kind of an Indian look to it and it's just really stunning. Now it's really easy to do um, silk screening just so you know and I'm going to use Souffle Clay again. I quite like to use it with a silk screening because it kind of has a matte finish on the back on on it and it, it looks great and uh, but you can use whatever you want and we're just going to grab any one of these I'll grab the hex flower one and what you need to do you have to be to be set up you want to make sure you have a thing of water close by and so that you can throw your stencil into it immediately after um, putting the paint on it. You, it has such a fine screen that any paints that dry in the screen may wreck the screen. So you don't want to let that get, uh, let the paint dry in there. And there is a dull side and a shiny side. Um, and you want to put the shiny side down and it helps some of the, some of these designs have it, um, their website written on the top. So if it, if the website looks correct, then it's the right side to have facing you. And then you just want to press it down. Now I found with the souffle clay, because it's kind of a dry clay, that it worked easier to press it down if I just used a bone folder. And you can see the color shifting a bit underneath and getting darker, so that means it's really stuck down. You don't want any air pockets, any kind of issues underneath. Make sure to get the edges. But don't kind of squish or leave lines in there or anything. You don't want to wreck the, the raw clay underneath. Now it's stuck down and all we have to do is take our paint. And I'm going to use two colors so that I can show you that's a neat little trick. These are the Lumiere paints. They're so pretty. They're made by the same company that makes uh, Prolex powders. And in fact, I think it's Prolex powders that's in it. <laughs> but anyways, I'm just going to take a little paint and um, run some along the top here. You don't need a ton. And I'm going to take some of the other color. Put some along this side. That way we'll have two colors running along. And I'll throw that in there. Um, okay, so now all we have to do is take a scraper. Now whether you have... Um, where's my scraper hiding? There it is. You can use like a, a, um, a squeegee, a rubber one. Don't use metal, just use plastic and uh, you can use this or you can just use like a, an old gift card. I kind of rounded the edges. This works great. And you just have to press down and slide this paint along the surface. And you're just pressing it into those holes in the paint, in the screen. And I could use a, a little bit more. Let me just wipe this off. I guess I didn't need to get my stuff all wet. All right, I'm going to add a little bit more so that I have enough in the whole, on the whole screen. And it's really simple. And I don't want to forget this side over here, so let's add some here. And we'll just run this across. Make sure that there's paint on all the spots. Now, if you want, you can cross over the paint in the middle there and get kind of a Skinner blend effect. There we go. And then all we have to do is peel this up carefully. You can check too, if you want, to make sure it's gone through. And if it has gone through, then um, you can just continue on. If it hasn't gone through the way you want it, then you can actually lay it back down and continue squeegeeing. Squeegeeing. But there we just pull it up and you have a very cool design. Now get it into the water immediately, otherwise you will have um, problems. 
with it clogging it up. And I have a little mushroom brush that I stole from my kitchen. And I just like to use that. It's nice and soft and I can scrub it up. You could use a soft toothbrush or something like that as well. And you can just clean that up. And as long as it's sitting in the water, it's good to go. And then all you have to do is let that dry. And when it's dry, you can cut it out and do some cool things with it. So let me just show you the, get rid of that here. This sample here, the earrings that I made, I had done one of those two color blends on a sheet like this. And then what I did was I cut out these little shapes. I actually used the Sculpey um, template shapes and I just flipped them over so that I had the uh, golden color on one end and the gray on the other and then the reverse on the other earring and it makes for quite um, a lovely pair of earrings. They have a very Indian kind of look to them too. And this set, um, I baked on one of these curved forms um, that I've made just out of um, a, you know, like these cardboard tape rolls. I cut it up and uh, just put some tape over, I mean, some paper over it and tape, and then just put the raw clay right on the top and bake the curve right into it. And that's what I did here. And then drilled some little holes, hung some uh, gemstones, some little goldstone gemstones from there and made some ear wires. They're really pretty. Um, these are going to be earrings, so I haven't quite decided. In fact, that's kind of why I chose some of these colors. I think something from this sheet would look really lovely with this set, so I'll have to figure out what I'm gonna make those into some sort of earrings or something. And then here's another pendant that I made um, using this uh, particular piece here. And the bottom edge of it looks so pretty. I decided to wrap that around a um, bead mandrel, kind of like this. So if this goes down the center there. And I wrapped it around and then added a uh, this other uh, section of the other piece because the color looks so pretty in contrast. And you can see kind of how it's just rolled around on the back there. And then I just added little bits of gold around the edges and give it a bit of a distressed look. So that's how I did that project there. And I think it's really quite cool. Now I think this is almost dry. Yeah, in, um, it's still damp in a few spots. Um, but at, when it dries, you can cut it out, bake it like you would normally bake um, any of your polymer clay projects. Just make sure that you have the... Um, the paint side up because you don't want the paint sticking to paper if you're baking something um, flat and that is it so what i really love about these is she, they've got absolutely tons and tons of designs they're a very nice large size so you, they're perfect for doing um, a large sheet of polymer clay um, the designs are quite um, unique i believe um, either elisa or kira are actually drawing the designs themselves so they're quite original and uh, they're not very expensive. They're about $15. So you might want to check their site out. It's createalong.com. And they have some other products and things there too. So I hope that was helpful for you and that you learned lots. And if you did like this video, do let us know. And if you've got a product you'd like us to test, an idea that you don't quite understand, anything to do with polymer clay that you need help with, make sure to leave your suggestions in the comment section below and we'll see if we can make a video for you and if not if we may already have made a video so make sure to check those out as well all right so we'll see you next time and bye for now